Hi and welcome to episode 3 of my DIY Smart Home series where I'm walking you through how to set up your own self-hosted, private, secure and feature-rich smart home. Last episode we covered how to get the software, Home Assistant, up and running and how to connect devices like our Zigbee-based Philips Hue white ambient bulbs. This episode is all about using Home Assistant to automate our lighting and by extension, getting to know Home Assistant a little bit more. Let me start off with the plan. It's a good idea to know what you want out of your smart home tech, what features you want to use. So let me explain what I'm after. I want my smart bulbs to be able to turn on at certain times of the day, like in the morning to help me get up out of bed, and to be able to change their color temperature throughout the day, going from a, a colder, sort of, I guess, harsher, cooler white in the morning to a, a warmer, softer, uh, well, white at night. That's generally called circadian lighting and it's something that I want to get working here. So that's the plan, the schedules and adaptive lighting. But how do we do that? Well, like many open source softwares, there are a whole load, like just an almost infinite number of different paths that you can take that all end up giving you pretty similar results, but all have varying levels of customizability, of practicality, and especially efforts required to both set them up and to maintain them. I want to start though with what Home Assistant can do already. If we take a look at the dashboard, the tab called Overview, you'll see this is full of almost all of the devices and sensors that we've connected already. Your dashboard likely won't look exactly like mine, as you'll have a different set of devices overall, but it's the same principle. This dashboard lets us manually control our lights. We can turn them on and off, and if you click on them, especially when they're already on, that lets us control both the brightness and the color temperature. But this isn't a very pretty dashboard, and to control things like the brightness or color temperature, we have to not only turn them on manually, but then click on the light to get a pop-up window, which, well, that just isn't all that great. This dashboard page is controlled by Home Assistant, and will automatically add any new devices and sensors that we connect, but because it's controlled by Home Assistant, we can't change what's here. Now, we can just take control of this dashboard by clicking the three little dots in the top right, clicking take control, then, well, take control on the pop-up box, but that means that we stop Home Assistant from controlling it. So, well, for now anyway, let's just head to the configuration tab on the sidebar, then click on dashboards, click add dashboard uh, on the uh, top right and that show that would let us add uh, a new dashboard of course you can give it a, a name in my case i picked main uh, you can pick an icon if you want it to be different i picked the the home assistant icon i thought that was nicely accurate and give it a url something like slash main and then hit create click on the three dots again up in the top right and then hit edit dashboard you can hit the add card button that's normally down at the bottom right and pick from the myriad of options that are available. The entities option is the one that will let you toggle individual items like lights on and off and also see information like temperatures and humidity from my Zigbee sensors that I'll be covering in the next episode. The light card though is the one that will be most useful here. So click on that, then select your bulb from the, the entities list. It might be named something like Philips LTA 0010AC03D09. Well, but luckily you can uh, happily rename it with the, the name option. You can pick an icon, pick any theme, although you likely don't have any installed just yet, so leave that be. Uh, change the hold or double tap options if you like, then hit save. And just like that, we now have a card that lets us both toggle the light on and off and just drag the brightness around easily. 
Sadly, the color temperature is still a click away, but we're gonna be automating that so it's no big deal. Okay, so how do we automate it? Well, again, there are countless options, but since I want to make this series as user-friendly as possible so that as many people as possible can follow along, we're gonna be using the, the easier option, and that is using the Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks. To install Hacks, you do need to use a, a single command line instruction, but don't worry, there are, uh, it, well, it's nice and simple, if nothing else. Well, you can go about running this instruction in a number of ways, and if you know how to do this already, then feel free to do it however you like, but I'm gonna walk you through the way that the Hacks website actually recommends you do it, which is, uh, or starts, with you clicking on your user profile button at the bottom of the, the sidebar, down at the bottom left. On that page, you want to toggle the option called advanced mode. Then head to the configuration tab in the, uh, well, on the sidebar on the, the bottom left, uh, click add-ons, then add-on store at the bottom right, then under the official add-ons heading, install the one called terminal and SSH. Once it's installed, and you might need to restart Home Assistant under configurations, settings, server controls, and then restart, you can then head back to the add-on page, click on Terminal and SSH, then open Web UI, and now you should have a, uh, well, a terminal page open. You can then copy and use Control and Shift and V to paste the command in uh, from the, the Hacks website, or type it in manually if that doesn't work too well, it starts adding extra characters, whatever else, then hit Enter and let it install. You will likely then need to clear your browser's cache or hard refresh the page, which you can do by holding your control key while either pressing the refresh button in your browser or hitting holding control and pressing F5. You can then go to configurations, devices and services, and then the add integration button down at the bottom right and select hacks. Once it is installed, you need to accept the, the usage terms, then it will prompt you for a GitHub access token. You will want to have a GitHub account pretty much anyway if you're diving into the world of open source projects. So if you don't already have one of those accounts, go ahead and register now. Then click on the link that's in the, the hacks of window uh, and sign in, authorize it. You may need to provide it a, an access token, then hit submit. That is then Hacks up and running now. It should be in the sidebar on the left, so let's head to it and take a look. Here we have two main options. Options for integrations and front end. Front end is all of the, the UI elements that you'll see on your dashboard, the, the cards, the graphs, the buttons, all that sort of stuff, and some themes as well, whereas the integrations tab, or options, is where you will find, well, the custom sort of backend components that generally make everything work and are sort of the, the fancy features on top. Now, I'll start with the integrations options. Specifically, the one I'm interested in is called adaptive lighting. This is what will change the color temperature and brightness of our bulbs throughout the day for us. So you can click on it, hit the install button on the bottom right, and again, you might need to restart Home Assistant, then head to the configurations tab, Devi uh, devices and services, click add integration, then click on adaptive lighting. You'll then want to select whatever lights you want to control here. In my case, I actually want the two bulbs to do slightly different things, so I'm gonna be picking just one, although of course, if you have them in the same room and you want them to work together, then obviously select as many as you like. Uh, and then you want to basically uh, set up all of the, the different settings. So things like the uh, transition time, how long you want it to take to change between colors any given instance. And uh, I set the minimum brightness to be more like 50 or 60%, uh, adjusted the color temperatures to be slightly within the, the bulb's actual range because the fully warm and fully cold are just a, a bit too harsh for me personally. And then hit submit. And that's it. It's all sorted. The lights will now automatically change color temperature 
throughout the day based on the, the sun's position relative to me. Excellent. Now, sadly, this doesn't let me schedule specific times where I'd like the lights to be on or off. So for that, we need to head back to Hacks. This time, let's go to the front end section, then the explore button on the bottom right, then find the scheduler card. This is the, the kind of fancy scheduler card that will let us do, well, all of the scheduling, although it's important to note that the scheduler is actually both a front end uh, sort of card and a back end integration. Now, let's install the front end card first. So hit the install button on the bottom right. And then once that's done, head to the integrations page in Hacks and search for the scheduler component and install that one too. Once both are installed and likely Home Assistant has restarted again, make sure to hard refresh your page with Control and F5 or Control and clicking the refresh button in your browser. And then you can head to your dashboard that we created earlier. Hit the edit button, then add card and scroll down to find the scheduler card or scheduler card custom component uh, that we added in. It should be pretty much at the bottom of your list and select it. Enable any of the entities you want it to control or have access to. In our case, just for a, a basic start, we're just going to pick lights for now. Then hit save and then on the card itself, there's a, a little add button and click on that. You can then click on what lights or lights you want it to control, click make scheme, then drag the effectively the, the blocks around the lines to make uh, sections for where you want each well action to pr be performed and make sure that you select the actions you want it pr to perform during that time. You can also add conditions on the options page like the light already being on or off and also if you have selected more entities in the, the scheduler window then you can even make it do things like detect when your phone is at home and only switch on when you're actually there and a whole load of other really cool stuff so do make sure you have a play with that because it's really impressive. So that's a look at how to customize our lighting setup. In this episode, we've covered a whole lot, getting through the, the community store, getting that installed, uh, installing custom components and front end cards, customizing dashboards, and setting up both schedules and adaptive lighting, which is a fair bit. Next episode is all about heating, making my central heating system just a, a little bit more uh, more smart. I don't know if you can see the goosebumps, but it's pretty cold in here, um, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, again, having that be actually controllable. So uh, yeah, I look forward to that. If you want to stay up to date with this series, then of course, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you haven't checked out the last episode or the episode before that, explaining all of the terminology and the, you know, the jargon that we are using in this, or this series, then do check out the full playlist on the end cards as well. If you want to pick up any of the devices and, and products that I've been using in the series, then I'm going to leave them all linked in the description down below for you to check out. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all of that good stuff like pricing by the way you watch this and pick them up yourself. And like I said, if you want to stay up to date, do hit the subscribe button. If you want to support the channel, you can do so in a load of different ways directly through YouTube with the YouTube join button and become a YouTube member or become a patron on Patreon instead with a link in the description. There's also a load of other links to places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there. There's VPN options, Humble Bundle and just a load of other stuff. And even merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs that I made myself. So feel free to take a look. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, do leave those in the comments down below. And yeah, we'll see you on the next video.